the power to declare election inconclusive or conclusive. And they can overturn it again? Yes, if they have serious reasons to say so. And if they say it, then what they did, the guideline of INEC under the Electoral Act, which is Section 153, will no longer arise. You know, this, 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 uh, the judgment you spoke about and uh, how INEC is right in, in this circumstance, the Constitution notwithstanding, how then do you interpret this? Because, I mean, many reminders that it was in 2018, as a matter of fact, the uh, House of Representatives election yes. in the same Kogi state, yes. where a member of the APC was declared winner of that election because he polled 26,860 votes against that of the PDP who had uh, 14,855. Now, the operative thing here is that there were cancelled votes. And the cancelled votes in this case, 19,960. So if you had 19,960 cancelled votes, the margin there was 12,015. So the cancelled votes there superseded that it was less than the votes, just like in this case. But in that particular scenario, I next declared the member of the APC the winner. Are you saying that in that particular election you're talking about, the cancelled votes, the cancelled votes is lesser than the winning margin from the polling units that were declared? Yes. Just like, or just as we have now. All right. And in that same case, the council votes were more than the winning margin. The, the, the winning margin. The council yes. votes was more than and, the winning and, margin, and, just and as then, we have now. Then the question then is this. I'm not a politician. No, we're looking at when, law. When there's a provision of law, whether subsidiary legislation or the real law itself, like Electoral Act now, which governs how the elections conducted in Nigeria by INEC, if we find a situation whereby it should be subject to myriads of interpretations. It behoves on those whose interests should be affected to go to court and test it beforehand. No, no, but the, well, they are aware of that guideline at page 22, 23 of Electoral 2010 as amended as to whether INEC can declare election inconclusive if they find themselves in what we have said now. Do, do so the question is this, why did we allow that to press in our laws? But do you think that this INEC guideline, does it apply to where elections were held or where elections did not hold and where results were cancelled? Well, the question is this. It's a test case. The law simplicity is that once you have winning margin in an election and it is less than the number of registered voters in the, vo the polling units that have been cancelled by INEC, you can declare that election inconclusive. So the question is this. My take in Nigeria is this. Why do we sleep until the issue becomes contentious? Because if you give Nigerians that kind of wide, I would call white power, it becomes subjectively applied, depending on who is... What, what do you mean if you give Nigerians white power? This is, uh, these are their laws regulating this conduct and these actions. But How if, if you talk about law, if you have INEC that conduct elections in accordance with the Nigerian Constitution and Electoral Act, mm -hmm. for, for them to go and sit down somewhere and make what they call their own guideline, to my mind, it's not a law made in the due process of making law for all of us in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. INEC should not have been allowed to make what they call guidelines that will seem to have overbearing effect on the resources of the election they want to conduct. It's like making them a judge in their own course. I'm wondering what's going to happen now because um, uh, clearly a lot, of, a lot of people are feeling very upset about what is happening and how INEC is going about this. But we saw a scenario in a number of states and in other instances as a matter of fact where uh, uh, officers of INEC that are meant to declare those results are receiving phone calls. I don't know if you've seen maybe this very particular one with a picture on social media making the round of a phone call being received. Should phone calls be barred from INEC as they are barring phone calls from getting to the polling uh, booths and in, in times of an announcing results? Do you think that will be a way to solve some of these uh, complications that we, we are recording? Absolutely, because we don't know who is making the calls. And it's a serious undue interference in the conduct of the election itself and it, it puts a question mark on the credibility of the election most of the time and this is what we have now so INEX guidelines should begin to factor that in or should we have that in the amendment of the electoral act it should be in the electoral act for me i did not believe that we need to allow IDEC to sit down and be making what they call guidelines they should so comply with should, the law. That system. is their own modus. Of, wouldn't, that, wouldn't you call that their own mode of operation? I mean, if they've been given them power to organize elections, they need to work out a system by which they'll go about organizing their elections. They need to work out because part of their responsibility is monitoring the political parties, kind of providing, like, these are the rules of the game to the political parties. They need to put that down. So you're saying 
they should not be allowed to do this? They should abide strictly by what's in the Electoral Act? If you look at the Nigerian Constitution, that's why I've talked about it, Section 69, 179, and then the Electoral Act, the provisions there are enough for INEC to do a credible elections if they want to be honest with us. If you allow them to begin to make guidelines that enables them to declare when we will declare results and when we will not declare results, Aside of what is contained in Section 69 and 179 of the Constitution, honestly, you are, you are allowing them to have a way to do whatever they like. The, you, you know you said something, why do we allow INEC to I mean, go ahead and form its own guidelines? But some of you lawyers advise them to go ahead because, I mean, you've been given a, a, a room to play, and so you have to create your own modus operandi. Sh shouldn't the lawyers also have questions to answer in that situation? Well, that's a very, very sore point for me as a Nigerian lawyer. You see, Nigerians must wake up to realize that when you say lawyers, you must begin to define who a lawyer is and who a lawyer should be. These lawyers are talking about, most of them are card carrying members of political parties. And when you find them advising people in government who are their cronies in their political parties, naturally they will do things that is in the interest of the parties to which they belong, which tomorrow, when they also want to contest for that kind of position you are talking about, it, naturally, they know what will happen, what will play out, and they will not be stupid enough to not to protect themselves. If in, in future, you can only have, if you have, let me give you a scenario. Now, broadcasting the guys of Nigeria now, your chairman is the chairman for, for the time being now, and then you now want him to make laws that will be against journalism in Nigeria or uh, uh, print, print media well, or whatever. Bond doesn't make laws. Uh, I'm laws coming. That is an example now. At least all of you here are interested in what happens in Bonn or all these media houses. If you have a neutral person who could be, a, for instance, a professor of mass communications, but he has no allegiance to whether print or electric media, he could come up with a very beautiful law for the industry. But if you want somebody who is, for instance, is in broadcast media to make law against broadcast I mean, media or, or print media, as the case may be, well, you're looking for water from the stone. It's not that. Okay. So when you take Nigerian lawyers, whether in banking, whether in life,